One Korean-American woman has been trying to break down barriers by sharing her own family's culture and history using TikTok videos. TikTok personality Joanne Molinaro joins me now. She founded the Korean Vegan Food Blog. Welcome, Joanne. Thanks very much for being with us. You have built an enormous following of more than 2 million people on TikTok, in part by telling stories about your family or addressing issues of racism, all while preparing food. Let's go ahead, first of all, and take a look at one of your most popular videos. This is about how your mother escaped North Korea. Mom once told me the story of how her family escaped North Korea. She wasn't even two years old when North Korea was attacking her village, and my grandparents scooped her and her little sister up and started running for the Yellow Sea. They could only bring with them whatever food they could carry. It took them two weeks, but they finally got there, and there was a U.S. naval ship that they boarded, which would take them to South Korea. But by that time, there was no food, and my mother was starving. She couldn't stop crying. My grandparents decided to throw her overboard as a mercy killing and drown her instead of watching her starve to death before their eyes. They walked up to the uppermost deck of the boat, where there were far fewer people. My mom was screaming and crying again because she was so hungry, and my grandparents were also crying. All of a sudden, a couple of American GIs approached, and although my grandparents couldn't speak any English, the GIs kind of figured out what was going on. They handed my mom a Hershey bar, and to this day, my mom says that Hershey bar saved her life. I mean, Joanne, it's just, it's so compelling and really extraordinary to think about how much you're able to share in such a short amount of time. What made you decide that you wanted to tell your family's story on TikTok through these kinds of videos? Well, first of all, thank you so much, Elaine, for having me. And thank you for your very kind words about my TikTok account. I decided to start sharing stories about my family very deliberately and intentionally in 2017. Um, it was right after the election here in the United States, and I felt that there was a great divide in our country. And part of that divide was a function of people not really understanding the immigrant story. And what I wanted to do was really humanize that story in a way that would be impactful and memorable. And I think one of the reasons I decided to share my personal stories is because I wanted them to be relatable. And I also wanted to elicit some emotion when people heard these stories so that they wouldn't forget about them the next time they were thinking about immigrant-related issues. And why do this through food videos, of all things? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I am a food blogger. Um, I started the Korean Vegan in 2016 <laughs> when I went vegan, and you know, I wanted to veganize Korean food. And what I realized was that particularly during the pandemic, when we could no longer have dinner parties, which I was a really big fan of before we couldn't do that anymore, mm -hmm. that conversations at the dinner table, conversations with friends, with colleagues, or people that you might meet, they were not happening anymore. And I wanted to recreate that experience virtually. So it's almost like here, you can't actually come to my dinner table, but I'm gonna make you some food anyway through my TikTok video. And it'll be just like you're sitting across the table from me, enjoying some of this delicious food. And of course, having some engaging, meaningful, and perhaps memorable memorable discussion. It's funny, my producer Ayana and I were um, looking at some of your videos and over the phone we were both talking about how hungry we were <laughs> looking through because it just, it looks amazing, some of these dishes you're preparing. Um, but on a, on a serious note, Joanne, are there any misconceptions about Asian Americans or Korean Americans that you've tried to address through your videos? I think more than misconceptions, what I'm trying to do is broaden um, my audience's understanding of the Asian American or Korean American experience. And, and part of that begins with food, right? So a lot of times when people find out I'm Korean, the first thing they say is, oh, I've had bulgogi or karbi, which is Korean barbecue, <laughs> as if that's the it's you know delicious. be all and end all of Korean cuisine. And what I try to do is show people that Korean cuisine is so much more more than Korean barbecue, obviously, partly because I'm vegan, but also just because Korean cuisine has such a great breadth and history when it comes to all sorts of different vegetables and carbohydrates and other parts of the food group that I want people to be aware of. I think the other thing that I really want to get across to people is that 
we may look a little bit different and our language may be a little bit different. Our food may smell completely different, but there is a lot that is alike between us and other people, that there's so much that's relatable on an emotional level and that that relatability is what allows people to engage and to really build connection, which is what I think is sort of missing, particularly now with the pandemic. You know, we're having this conversation uh, about a month after uh, that terrible uh, shooting, the mass shootings in Georgia at the Asian spas last month, where eight people were killed, including six women of Asian descent. And I wonder, Joanne, how did that affect you personally? Um, you know, you were talking about the fact that you had started to share your family's story well before this year. But I wonder, for so many in the AAPI community that I've had a chance to talk to, they look at that event is really sort of this inflection point as they reflect on their own kind of sense of identity. I think that's a really great way of putting it, an inflection point. And certainly for me personally, it was um, an experience that I had not experienced before. I was personally very confused uh, I think was the first emotion that I felt. I didn't know how to feel about it because I had never experienced anything like that before. But I think, Elaine, in all honesty, the point where it really converged for me was the press conference that was held by the sheriff's office. And when I heard the way the sheriff's office was positioning the incident, that's when a lot of the rage and a lot of the sadness really converged to a point. And it was when that happened, I was able to communicate what I felt was really, really important to the AAPI community, uh, but also to all of my followers. And I think those are two things. Number one, I really wanted to reach out to my community because I could feel their suffering. I was feeling their suffering. And I really wanted to soothe that suffering. I wanted them to feel comforted and I wanted them to feel safe to express their emotions. But then the second thing that I really wanted to get across to them was to mobilize them, to empower them, to do something with their pain that was constructive and productive. And so those are the two messages that I really wanted to get across. And I did that by, again, turning back to our family, because at least for me personally, and I think in Asian culture, that family is so central to our identity and sense of empowerment. Absolutely. In our final couple of minutes here, Joanne, I just want to ask, you know, why TikTok uh, to try and share these stories? It's an interesting kind of platform to use. And who is the audience that you're hoping to reach? What's the big takeaway for people from your videos, you think? Well, TikTok is a wonderful community. I, I, you know, I am so immensely grateful to that community. And the answer to your question really starts with why did I even start a TikTok to begin with? And it was because I felt that, you know, I'm 41 years old and I was so inspired by the energy that I was seeing out of the young people who are utilizing TikTok on a you know, daily basis. They are the ones who are mobilizing themselves and creating a new form of activism that really excited me. And I wanted to be part of that. So I started my TikTok without any intent of sharing food videos. I thought it would be an outlet for me to sort of engage with my political activism. Um, but it, as it were, it turned out that I could do both of those things at the same time. Now, who I'm trying to reach, I would love to continue to engage with the young people who are on TikTok, those who continue to inspire me with their energy, with their level of education, with their passion, and with their real sense of doing the right thing. That resonates with me so much, and my hope is that my message continues to resonate with them. I, I can't even begin to describe how inspired I am by the TikTok community on literally a daily basis. Joanne Molinaro, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Elaine.